welcome back and ting and ting and ting i'm mr giant and i'm back with some more vibes for all you yes i and today we're going to be watching there were no slaves in britain let's go ahead and youtube and sim sim look i understand why they're doing all this protesting over in the usa but we didn't even have slavery in britain you couldn't even be a slave in britain so we don't need to protest all this stuff right wrong in fact more than wrong that's bullcrap and i'm going to prove it I'm going to prove it with the most archaeologically important evidence known to man. Gravestones. And also the Runaway Slaves in Britain Index, which you should totally check out. We're going for a walk. Come on. Welcome to the Royal Mile in Edinburgh. Just behind me is St. Giles' Cathedral. There it is, looking all pretty and gothic and nice. And not many people know that there was originally a prison just here. Well, not here, here, sort of over there. I'll go and stand there. I'll go and stand there. In 1756, an enslaved man called James Montgomery was brought here after running away from a slave ship that was leaving Port Glasgow to take him over to Virginia, where he'd probably have worked in the tobacco plantations. Montgomery was bought in 1750 in Fredericksburg in Virginia by a Scotsman called Snedden. He paid 56 pounds, 12 shillings and sixpence for the man and brought him back over to Ayrshire, where he worked for the next six years. In 1756, he decided that it was time to get baptised, so he ran and got baptised by a man called Dr. John Witherspoon. Now, Witherspoon was actually involved in the American Declaration of Independence, but who cares, that's not what this is about. Now, when Snedden found out about this, he forced James onto a slave ship, the one that I talked about just a minute ago, to get him back over to Virginia, where there'd be much less chance of him escaping. Thankfully, James managed to run here, to Edinburgh. Now, Snedden put out a newspaper advert, a runaway slave act, the kind of thing that you normally associate with American slavery, and it worked. Montgomery was found, arrested, and brought here to the Tollbooth prison. James decided that he was going to sue for his freedom. Because he was baptised, that made him a Christian, and he was, quote, by his Christian religion, liberate. Now, the theory was that when you were a Christian in Britain in the 18th century, by law, you couldn't be owned by another human being. You had possession of your own body, habeas corpus. Now, if James had survived, spoiler alert, he doesn't, he almost certainly would have won his freedom in the court of sessions, just to my left here. Unfortunately, after six months in prison, James Montgomery died from the horrible conditions in the toll booth, and he died a slave, just behind me. Okay, so what he's saying that there was a slave that ran away and, uh, you know, got his uh, freedom or would have gotten his freedom by becoming a Christian. Now, that's one story there. And I'm not saying there weren't slaves in Britain, but from what I did, the research that I did and stuff like that, there wasn't like slaves on, uh, on plantations and, and, you know, like mass groups of slaves and all of that in there now uh, i did a video back about uh the british ended the slave trade you know and uh my reaction was uh actually let me put it this way okay i uh broke the cardinal rule of sociologists i didn't take a subjective view of things i took an emotional view of it you know what i mean and thing so i had like a not too positive reaction to it you know and that was based on things that were happening here where i am in the states now having said that let's think about it this way if uh there wasn't like mass slavery in britain what that would mean is that the common people were not uh exposed to the mass slavery that was happening here in America, which would mean that most ordinary people wouldn't know the extent of the slave trade. Now, I'm not saying they were totally ignorant of it, but they wouldn't know the extent of it because it's not right there, you know what I'm saying? Uh, he didn't mention anything about, uh, he mentioned him being arrested, 
but you know not the same type of like whippings and torture that they were uh, uh, exposed to the slaves were exposed to in this part of the world so I said that common people you know wouldn't know anything but it seemed from what I've read and I've researched that once the common people started realizing what's going on especially uh, the religious movement they were up in arms and after a while those in charge and the rich people had to listen to them because you know when a mass movement of people uh, start mobilizing politicians will listen because you know they want to get elected and uh, who's going to elect them who's going to vote for them if you know they don't do pretty much what the will of the people are now I'll give you a modern sort of a uh, scenario to that for instance even today with the internet and all of this stuff there's a lot of people and a lot of people I'm around right now don't know what's going on in the rest of the world so imagine back then those people not knowing what's going on except for stories and stuff and of course the stories could be so grotesque that uh, you know they, they it's unbelievable you know which in turn led to the Bamba Ridge situation where uh, the soldiers, the British soldiers, were appalled that the American soldiers, white American soldiers, didn't want the African American soldiers to congregate with the white British soldiers and that caused like a riot and all of that there. So I guess what I'm trying to say is this, you know, if people don't know or know little of something, there will be no movement to change it. And it takes time for people to realize what's going on and a mass movement to come and make those changes. My reaction to that was sort of, you know, I was thinking more of racism than I was of the actual slavery itself, which one is sort of a, a product of the other. However, it's not, there's no slavery right now as, the, as pertaining to that specific thing you know uh, here in this part of the world but there is racism and my experiences with racism sort of uh, clouded my uh, objective thinking of the ending of the slave trade now nobody's uh, saying oh I'm not saying that uh, Britain is exempt from anything because you know they were part of it to begin with and then they decided to end it but what I'm trying to say is you know as when it comes to ordinary people and stuff like that we can't sit back and go well, wait a minute no everybody is part of this when only some people benefited from what was happening now, I don't want to say benefited uh, I guess everybody benefited from it for a certain extent if you're not part of the race that was being enslaved however the ones that made the big money off of it really profited from it and live high and mighty while at the time a lot of like British people were suffering living okay to, 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 for lack of a better term in relation to here from paycheck to paycheck and when you're living from paycheck to paycheck you really don't do deep dives into things and understanding it you need someone to come along and be a sort of a voice to explain to you what's going on and then it's up to you to make a decision whether or not you think what is happening is right and from what I've read and, and I've watched and stuff like that people didn't like it so then there was a sort of up, up rival you know what I mean and uh, so there was a big movement to end the slave trade coming to America I had this idea because America invaded in my country and this is from my own personal experience of a situation similar to that not similar to the slave trade but a sort of similar situation the situation where what I heard on the island being in that vacuum is that oh those Americans they're violent they this they that the other and then I came here and I realized it's different most of them didn't even know where Grenada was so why am I blaming them or disliking them for what happened in Grenada when it was the government that did it and the stories that the government told them was derogatory of what was happening in Grenada at the time so we have to start learning about each other people just ordinary people and maybe if we start doing that then a lot of uh you know atrocities wouldn't happen because i mean most of them the, the humane people 
are the people who walk in from paycheck to paycheck. You know what I'm saying? You go to work and stuff, and I'm not saying there's no racism. I'm going to repeat that. But you go to work every day, you try to make ends meet, and you meet people of all different races, and, 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 and you know, most of the times you don't really meet uh, people of, uh, or talk to people of higher economic standards. So you don't understand how things are affecting them, especially if you don't take a deep look to see what, they, what they're doing, how it's affecting you negatively or affecting human beings negatively. I hope I explained that, uh, you know, precisely there, you know what I mean? But let's go on here, let's continue with this and see what else he's got to say. This is the last stop in our little walk around Edinburgh today. This is St. Cuthbert's graveyard, but behind me is St. John's churchyard. There's a churchyard next to a churchyard. Welcome to Edinburgh. And behind that wall over there is the only gravestone in Edinburgh to a woman born into slavery. And her name was Malvina Wells. <clears throat> Malvina was born in Grenada into slavery and came over wow. to Scotland with the McRae family. And she worked here for 70 plus years. Wow. So that's Scotland for you. I've given you a couple of enslaved people who lived and worked and died in Scotland in the 18th and 19th centuries. But what about the rest of the UK? Well, you can't get away from it either. <clears throat> There's a man uh, in Wales, quite a famous character from West Wales, called John Austin Sin. And John Austin Sin was born in the West Indies in the 18th century. He came over to Wales with the Wynne family of Crickieth in West Wales, and he died in Wales and is buried there with his wife, who was a local maid. He actually ran away from the house he was working in to marry his wife and was then given a job as a free man in the town that he had previously worked in as an enslaved person. There's obviously Scipio Africanus in Bristol and also in Wiltshire there's a grave of a woman called Myrtilla which speaks volumes. It simply says, a slave. It's pretty unequivocal. You can't actually deny that there were enslaved people living in Britain when we've got their gravestones here. So, there you go, there were no slaves in Scotland, there were no slaves in Britain. That's a lie. You don't erase history when you pull down the statues to the people who bought those people, who bought those men and women. You erase history when you forget that those men and women even existed. Wow. So, it would be naive to think that there was no slaves in England back then. You know the rich people are going to bring their slaves in there, you know what I mean? So, no. They were slaves, but uh, I didn't see anything about mass slavery within Britain. Mass slavery to the extent of what we had here in the West Indies and uh, here in uh, America. That's just crazy there, you know what I mean? Uh, this is the first time I've seen this video, and I, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> it went in a, a really different direction than I thought. You know, I, was, I thought he was going to explain sort of why there weren't any slaves in uh, in Britain. But then again, he proved that there were. Man, I'll be honest, I don't like talking about slavery much because it gets real emotional and then there's no objective opinions and, and, and you know, how to curb what's going on right now, which is uh, racism. And uh, I might encounter that a lot. The other day at work, a dude walked up to me, and uh, not being American, you probably wouldn't understand that. Uh, an older gentleman walked up to me and says, hey, black man, have you, have you, what did he say? Chuck and jive lately, you know what I mean? Of course, you know, my response wasn't very uh, friendly because I, I totally understand what he was trying to say. So it does exist here. I don't know there. Comment down below, tell me what's going on, you know, tell me, you know, because it seems like everybody that talked to me on YouTube is pretty, uh, just other human beings, you know what I mean? Listen, man, I'll leave a link in the description for this video. Uh, Y'all could go watch it and, and, you know, see what's up. But drop some comments in the, in the uh, comment section. Tell me what you think of this, okay? In the meantime, man, y'all take care of each other, all right? Cool runnings.